Okay, so um, great pleasure now handing the floor to our third regional uh, finalist this year, a winner, Avishka Sravastava, uh, representing FFFAI India and Region Asia Pacific. Um, Avishka's dissertation was titled Sustainability Through Efficiency, Decarbonizing Trade Lanes Through Sustainable Logistics. So if I could hand the floor to you, Avishka. Thank you, Mike. Sustainability through logistics efficiency. Is it achievable or just wishful thinking? Anyong haseo, namaste, konnichiwa, kia ora, assalamu alaikum, ni hao, and warm greetings to everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to be representing the vibrant countries of the Asia Pacific. I am Avishkar Srivastav, a young logistics professional from India, a country famous for its food, culture, music, and of course, Bollywood. And we are also famous for our philosophies. One of them is Vasudhav Kutumbukam, which translates to the world is a family. If you think about it, the logistics fraternity is one big family, right? We come from different parts of the world to wonderful conventions such as this, and we interact with each other, get to know each other's stories, and we try to find ways for mutual growth. This spirit of collaboration has been the essence of my dissertation. My dissertation has talked about two case studies, an export and an import, where logistics players from across the board joined hands and collaborated to transform the hinterland city of Eastern India called Durgapur. So let's begin. Here is a picture of a typical export land movement from India to Bangladesh. Trucks arrive at the border and due to infrastructure congestions, they remain stuck for weeks and months on end. Think of the poor Indian truck drivers who stay stranded away from their families for long periods of time due to the infrastructure bottlenecks. During the pandemic, the land borders came to a close indefinitely. Our neighbors did not even have the essential commodities. There was a state of panic. Could the logistics industry just wait for the pandemic to end and for the land borders to open up? No. The world depends on logistics professionals and we had to come together to find new ways to collaborate. The result, during the COVID pandemic, we had the first ever multimodal rake shipment from Durgapur to Bangladesh. Now think about it, the first ever shipment during times of a pandemic. Of course, there were challenges. The rail terminal at the destination did not have the infrastructure to handle general purpose containers. So, in short notice, side open containers had to be arranged for the shipment. The agricultural products were moving to Bangladesh, and yet, due to labor shortages, the rice mills were under severe pressure because they had to load a sufficient amount of cargo in a very short period of time. But through the power of oneness and collaborations, this movement was successful, and an inaugural rake shipment happened from Durgapur to Bangladesh, where not only did we meet the supply of the agricultural products, but we did so in a sustainable manner with reduced carbon emissions because we shifted the chunk of the movement through rail. I would say this happened because the logistics industry during the pandemic moved from a circle of concern to a circle of influence. So what is a circle of concern? It's worrying about things which are not in our control. We could not just wait for the land borders to open up or the pandemic to end. We went inside our circle of influence, which means we focused on things we could actually change, like analyzing the existing trade lanes and actively interacting with stakeholders. And this is a result why this export movement was successful during the crisis. This, this mindset helped us solve a similar problem on the import side of things. We are all aware of driver shortages during the pandemic. India was no different. And Durgapur is in the hinterland region, over 200 kilometers away from any gateway port. During this time, we had to handle a 1600 container shipment from North Lincolnshire in the UK to the hinterland city of Durgapur. The cargo, uh, the container shortage was also an issue and our UK partners had done extensive planning to make sure the containers would be loaded on the vessels. But once the containers arrive at the gateway port, could we just wait for the drivers to come back? No, the world depends on logistics professionals. We had to collaborate. Once the vessels arrived at the gateway ports, they were quickly transferred to a rail terminal in Kolkata, the gateway port where the vessel arrived. From here, the cargo moved to a rail terminal in Durgapur. The last mile delivery took place by road. 
The cargo was de-stuffed on time and the importer did not have to pay a single penny of detention to the shipping lines during that period. Now the importer was worried at the time because they were needing the commodity to arrive at their factories else the factories would stop operating and that would have a big effect on the local economy. However, they were pleased to see the resilient logistics partners because when the world needed logistics, we stepped up. We made sure that the cargo arrives in the hinterland. We are able to de-stuff the cargo and we are able to deliver the cargo, the empty containers back to stop the detention charges. Sustainability through efficiency. Yes, it is achievable. In these two case studies, we saw the Indian customs, the Bangladeshi customs, the UK customs, the custom broker fraternity, freight forwarders, container rail operators and road transporters all came together with a spirit of collaboration and a spirit of oneness to make a positive contribution to not just solve a crisis, but to positively contribute to the UN sustainable goals with the spirit of Vasudev Kutumbukam. So it's only fair since I talked about collaborations and family that I end with a small glimpse of my family. This is a picture of me and my father at the 2018 Fiat World Congress in New Delhi. I was just a beginner that time starting into the logistics industry. If someone told me that time, four years later, I would be representing region Asia Pacific, I would have never believed it. So to all the youngsters out there, believe in this industry. It has a lot of opportunities. And to all the industry experts here, thank you for supporting us. And we need your continued support so that we can truly make this a sustainable industry and a highly aspirational one for all youngsters. Thank you for hearing me out. Thank you very much, Avishka. Another fascinating uh, dissertation um, and presentation. Thank you. Back to the topic of sustainability. As I mentioned, it was involved in just about every dissertation this year. Um, and the journey to net zero emissions is one that inevitably affects us all in one way or another. And it's a truly fascinating and vitally important topic. In your dissertation, you focused on driving operational efficiencies versus maybe changing, um, you know, fuel type or energy source. And I think this is a, a really important aspect along that journey towards net zero. But in your experience and opinion, do you see this as the most important first step? Uh, thank you. See, I feel we have to look at sustainability, the road to sustainability as a staircase and not an elevator. Because an elevator just jumps you from first floor to 50th floor, but the world realities are different. In South Asia, I really feel we need to look at it step by step. And operational efficiency is very important because in the future, maybe there will be alternate fuels coming in. There may be trucks running on electric uh, electricity. But at the end of the day, if the road network is so congested, we will always end up having incremental changes taking place. The first, we have to understand, are we utilizing our infrastructure in an efficient manner or not? And if we are not, what are the ways we can first work upon that? So that when new technologies come in, the growth and the changes will be more transformational in nature rather than incremental. So I do believe, yes, that operational efficiencies is the first important starting point for all of us. Thank you. Thank you.